Hello and welcome to Build Series Sydney. I'm your host, Danny Clayton, and joining me now, baby-faced crooner, dream boat, AJ Mitchell. Look at him, and he's right here. How Look you at doing? that baby face. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? I'm doing good. Yeah. Doing great. I mean, you're one of the few guests which actually got really into our theme song. It's good to see you have a little bop there. It's yeah, that was tune. a good theme song. Yeah. I was like, mm, trying to yeah. dance to it a little bit. Now, <laughs> before we get into, God, albums, about performances, about music in general, uh, I must say, like, you've, you've stepped off the plane as a... 18-year-old American, where the legal age is 21. Uh -huh. The moment you stepped off that plane, did you buy yourself a beer? The moment I got on the plane, I got myself <laughs> a beer. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, you oh, got to yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> look, let's talk music. Um, I've been consuming your music like a, a high school teenage girl. I've been, like, delving deep. <laughs> no I've way. gone down a spiral. And I, I must say that um, I'm very, very impressed uh, it has the the complexity and the the, uh, the emotional kind of depth of of someone who is you know much more experienced. Uh, like I'm a 32 year old man, yeah. and and I was digging these beats. So I, I really want to know like where does all of this complexity in, in, in lyrical content and, and emotional kind of depth where does it come from? <laughs> um, it comes from just life life experience. Like yeah. everything you know, like literally every day there's you know something news to to write about so i like to write about like things that are going on in my life and mm. you know like life lessons that i've learned um and just yeah just stuff like that yeah now slow slow uh, dance is a jam yeah uh and uh gosh the ava max vocals are yeah. such a lovely compliment to your voice when did you first meet her how did that all come about so i actually met ava the day before we shot the music video wow so i didn't even meet so i didn't even meet her when she cut the record so i originally cut the song and we were kind of thinking we wanted a really powerful vocalist on it. Yeah. Um, like a female, female vocalist. And Ava Max is one of the first people that um, we kind of thought of. And so yeah. we sent it over to her and her team. She cut it in like six hours, sent it back over. Wow. Um, and me and my team, we were just like blown away. Yeah. Like she sounded like Christina Aguilera. Like yeah. It was so <laughs> good. And we were like, okay, this fits perfectly. Her voice sounds amazing. It fit mm. perfectly with mine. And so we went with it. Yeah. And the music clip is spicy. Uh, it's a little spicy. It's quite spicy. <laughs> a very, very obvious nod to Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet. Exactly. Are you a big Baz Luhrmann fan or Romeo and Juliet fan? Like where? Um, I love the Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. Like I love like the the way they filmed it. Um, like I think they were so ahead of their time, even like to the outfits that they were wearing, mm. to like just to everything. It was just so it's just a brilliant, brilliant yeah. movie. And it seems like you're a bit of a party shirt kind of guy as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, I love I love putting together outfits. Like before, like when I was a kid, I had like I wore like the same shoes, the same pants, same shirt like every single day. Um, but now I'm at that point where like I like fashion. I like yeah. fashion. This is actually a girl shirt too. Yeah. But See, like wearing the same shirt, wait, same shoes. That's me every day. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a killer Prada shirt you got oh, there, thank my you. friend. Thank you very much. Um, so it's like I, I, even looking at your uh, your tattoo, it has oh. it has a, a very kind of Baz Luhrmann kind of vibes to it. Yeah. So this there. was actually this was um, gonna be the slow dance artwork, and wow. so I was just really I was really drawn to it, and um, kind of this tattoo just reminds me like to like. When when I'm going through like a hard time in life, it's just like you know everything happens for a reason. So like to see the beauty through the hard times, wow. and to know like once I get once I get through that, you know it's gonna be a big li life lesson that I learn. And um, so that's kind of what it reminds me every time I look at it. Wow. So where'd you get it? What inspired it? So I actually got it in New York City, cool. and it was the day before the VMAs. I w it wasn't like anything <laughs> planned, but I was like, I want to get it. Like I had a free day, and I was like, um, we should get a tattoo today. <laughs> so I went. <laughs> And I got it done, and no regrets. Yeah, I love it. See, most people are like we should go get a hot dog or go ice skating. You're like, let's get a <laughs> yeah, get I'm a tattoo. Like, let's get a tattoo. Actually, yesterday I got another tattoo. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you looked down, and I'm like, I can't see it. I must ask, where is it? Is that a, <laughs> is that a dodgy it's, question? It's right here. It's it's someone like you. You can't see it. Okay, uh, but it's a smiley face. And okay. The reason <laughs> for that is my mom used to always like draw smiley, draw a smiley face on like. Um, like before I went to school, she would like draw a smiley face and be like, have a good day. So um, it kind of just reminds me to stay positive and keep a smile on my face. Does this like drawing on your lunch bag? <laughs> like, like on my like homework or like she'll draw uh, like just like a smiley face. Okay, and, like, that's pretty cute. Even, even like when I started to travel a lot more, she got a smiley face that she put on my suitcase. <laughs> so just like, it's just something that always reminds me of my mom and just... You know, uh, makes me smile. Look, this is an international show. Your mom could be watching right now. Anything you want to say to your mom? 
Say it. Mom. <laughs> Say I love you. Yeah, you got that. You, yeah, that's cute. Um, is this kind of like a, a prediction of what's to come, uh, tattoo wise? Uh, are you going to be a tattooed man like Travis Barker from Blink One Eight Two style? Like, I don't know if it's ever going to be like that, but I definitely want. I definitely want a couple tattoos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I now, think I already know what my next one's going to be. Right, <laughs> up, like Post Malone on the face. Uh, yeah. No, at least like three or four. Okay. Um, well, it's funny that uh, you know I, I bring up Post Malone because uh, listening to the Slow Dance EP, um, I mean, I really dig it. Uh, particularly because it, I feel like it's the only really person I can you know compare the, the sonic sound to would be someone like Post Malone because it has almost like a hip hop beat and like yeah. R and B sound, and then yeah. accompanied with your your vocals, it's it's just it's a jam. Um, is this going to be a bit of a prediction for what's dropping in 2020? Yeah, totally. So, like, with music that I release um, and, like, songs that I write, I, you know, I like to write songs that I would like listening to. And I love all music from, like, Post Malone to, like, Lil Wayne. I mean, I love, I love like, all, all sorts of music from, like, Aretha Franklin to Whitney Houston to, like, all, all sorts of music. And that's, like, music I like listening to and that's music that I like writing as well. Mm. So I don't. I like to not stick to one lane. Like it's not like straight down the middle pop. I like yeah. pulling, drawing inspirations from all over. Yeah, wicked. And um, it's definitely something I. I know this is this might be a strange uh, prediction, but it's slow dance is probably going to be that song that gets played at every single school formal. Or for you, I think you guys call it prom. Yeah. Or prom. <laughs> prom. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's going to be like that final song. Oh, yeah. Where it's like the underdog has that opportunity to to kiss the girl. That was definitely dreams. one thing in mind too. We're like, let's hope this kid's played at every prom, yeah. every prom, every <laughs> formal, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every so I need to, I need to ask it. Have you been to proms? I mean, uh, did you get a chance to do school properly? <laughs> so um, so I started doing online school uh, my sophomore year yeah. of high school, and that's when I officially transitioned to LA and I moved to Los Angeles. But I actually got an opportunity to go to my prom. Uh, senior year, yeah. uh, the school actually let me come back, so I came back for prom, um, and I went with my w- went with my best friend. Okay, cool. Um, so I got to experience that. Okay, because I was like uh, thinking about the way you write your music, and you know a lot of it, you you can really tell that it comes from these uh, genuine experiences. A, a part of me is a little bit worried that you know uh, and that you might miss some of these important teenage experiences. Yeah. Does that ever cross your mind that you're living this jet setting life that you yeah. might miss out the things that your friends are doing? Um, I think, you know, I didn't really get into the industry until I was like 15 or 16. So I think I had, I had that time of like being a kid and, you know, getting in trouble, doing all that thing, like exploring. Um, I had very adventurous, um, life as a kid. Um, mm. there wasn't very much to do in my hometown Yeah. besides like get in trouble or like go exploring. So we would like all get in our bikes and like go explore the hometown, which was like going to band and building. Cause that was the only fun thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, I love that. You know, you say that you didn't get into the industry until you were at least sixteen, as if that was really late. <laughs> yeah. Now you're so an I old mean, man. I, yeah. You know? Well, I guess I s- I'm, what I was trying to say, like, I still had like a little bit of my childhood. Yeah. You're gonna retire by twenty one. Yeah. Know, you're no, no. Hang I'm, up the mic. I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um. Because I mean, even looking at the video clip that you did for girls, uh, you know, you're in a school uniform, singing around a bunch of other girls in their uniforms, and um, it made me wonder, you know, about what kind of student you. You were when you were going to school. I mean, yeah. were you a were you a good guy or were you a mischievous uh, scamp? <laughs> um, I was a good guy. I was a good. I mean, okay, um, student. <laughs> I was a good student. Um, honestly, I wasn't. I, I I wasn't able to focus that well in school. So like, I was kind of a class clown. Okay. <laughs> like, I would like do- doze off in class, and then I'd look up and the class would already be done. I'm like, oh, well, I just missed all the math yeah. again <laughs> for the third day in a row. Um, so, yeah, and then and then especially, like, freshman year, towards the end of the year, I was, like, traveling back to L.A., um, from L.A. to Illinois, so I'd missed a lot of school between that time. So it was, it was kind of hard to stay, um, to keep up with school at that point. So the sure. transitioning to online school was a lot easier because I was able to travel and still work on school at the same time. So it was a lot easier for me. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's in- interesting for uh, many artists who – they talk about their schooling years and a lot of them have one teacher, like, you know, that one person that really played a, a huge part in their career. And it might not necessarily be a music teacher. Yeah. It might be like a, a, a history teacher or an English teacher. Did you ever have one of those, do you think? So I would say one teacher 
um, was a teacher in eighth grade, and he was actually my math teacher. Wow. Um, and I love math, but also he played the guitar, and uh, he loved music, and he knew that um, I sang as well. So um, after school, like, sometimes we would, like, jam out. He'd be like, yo, you want to stay out? And, like, and jam after school. So sometimes, like, I would just, I would hang around, and we would we would jam out after school. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> with my math teacher. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> so Mr. So Ogney. Yeah. yeah. Do you, does he know that you're now traveling the world as a quite well-off, you know, a musician? Uh, I don't know. I actually haven't talked to him in a long time. Write him a letter. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, a lot of your music comes from, uh, you know, your family as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, reading stories about starting at, I'm not sure if I believe this. Look, I, I need a fact check <laughs> with you directly. I read that you started playing music when you were four. Mm -hmm. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm not sure if I could walk when I was four. <laughs> so what were were you doing at four? Kind I mean, nothing good at four. Okay. I mean, I was like slamming the keys, just like just starting. And um, my dad, he was learning how to play the piano when I was growing up. So I kind of saw that and I was like, oh, okay. okay. I kind of want to do that too. And he was writing songs for my mom at the time. So wow. um, that's kind of what inspired me to do it myself. Yeah. And, you know, do you think that you could... <laughs> I might get you in trouble, but do you think you could bring your dad on tour? <laughs> bring my dad musician, on tour? <laughs> you know, get him on uh, playing keys or something like that. That would be kind of funny if I but came out and I'm like, I and give it up for my dad. <laughs> 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 and then my dad walks out and plays a song. Yeah. It would be a little weird, but it could be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it just piano that you, you play? or like, I mean, what? Um, My main instrument is piano. Okay. But um, I dabble around on like guitar and drums a little bit. Okay, and you know, moving forward to this you know, next record, I really want to talk about Skyview. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, we've got quite a diverse range of, you know, uh, not hate songs, but I guess, uh, you know, re revenge songs or like, you know, sticking it to the people songs and love songs and, mm -hmm. you know, ballads so far. So, uh, looking at Skyview, uh, what we'd be exploring, what kind of concepts we'd be going through? Yeah, so pretty much for Skyview, um, so Skyview is actually a drive in movie theater in my hometown. And so pretty much for this album, I want people to know, like, who I am and where I came from because I think it's very important that, you know, people see that side, like, um, like how I grew up and, like, where I did came from because I feel like once people know that side of me, then I feel like they really get to understand the music. And so with this album, that's um, what the album talks about. It's, like, who I am. Why I was from. the Skyview Cinema uh, so significant to you that yeah. you named a whole record? What, so what, what happened there? Yeah, so pretty much, I mean, like I said, the, I'm, I'm from a small town. There was nothing to do there. So Skyview was like the, the staple piece of my hometown, like where like I went to as a kid, my parents went to, like their grandparents went to all the time. Mm. So um, it was, you know, a big staple piece of my hometown. So when I think of my hometown, I think of Skyview. Yeah. And I think it really just ties it all together. Yeah. Did, is this the place where everyone went for dates? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took my first girlfriend there too. No way. Uh -huh. Um, and because you know, <laughs> like you're listening to your music, it's like I can tell that you've gone through some, you know, some heartbreak and, and yeah. some love. But it seems like a a, a lot has happened in, in in your life. Who hurts you? <laughs> like S shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you learn from it, and that's that's the best part of life. Okay, cool. Um, now I've explored a lot of your videos that have landed all across the internet. It seems like you were very, very prolific uh, uploading videos with y your friends. Some are very, very funny. Some are mm -hmm. very impressive. I think there was one where there was like a 50 people in a shower <laughs> in playing Green Day. 50 uh, people in know, a shower? No, like in a, in a bathroom and like you were singing and like there was one where you had some guys coming up behind you as you were playing piano and it was like... Oh my God. I actually, now I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I think that was like... That was one of the first videos I've like I ever did when I came out to Los Angeles when I came out to wow. LA. Um, so long ago that you can't that remember. Yeah, <laughs> I really totally. I was like, fifty dudes in a sh fifty <laughs> dudes in a shower. I'm like, D where are we jail? Like, what is this? <laughs> um, so yeah, just looking at, <laughs> like looking at that and like oh, you know you had me laughing. Yeah. Um, I want to know like who are these people? Who, who so so originally when I first came out to Los Angeles, I ended up joining like this. Uh, this group of like social media influencers. And that's kind of what got me my start in social media. But I really, um, I didn't want to take that route of being a social media influencer um, because I wanted people to take me seriously. And at that time, that's like, when doing videos like that, that wasn't something that I was like, I was really um, wanting to do. 
um, because I wanted people to take me seriously. And if I thought if people saw videos of me like that, they wouldn't take my music seriously. Mm. So I ended up se separating from that group about like three or four months later. Yeah. Um, and that's when I found my manager. Yep. And then I released three singles independently. And then after that, ended up signing my record deal with Epic Records. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Seems like you're going the right direction. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, independent songs, of course, is a, a big deal, working on your own tunes. And, yeah. you know, uh, I'm guessing that you're not writing those songs in a bathroom with 50 dudes. Um, uh, never. And <laughs> it, it seems as though a lot of musicians do have a favorite place to, to write music. And yeah. sometimes it's just in their bedroom. Sometimes it yeah. might be in a really fancy studio. Do you have, like, a preferred place, your, your place of calm? Um, a preferred place, I would say, at the piano. Just at the piano. Just Does, at the piano. Doesn't matter where the piano is. Um, preferably, you know, I liked. I mean, it really just depends the situation. Like, if I go to a writing session, then like that's I love doing that as well. But also, like, if I have an idea and I'm by myself, um, then I like to go to the piano and I like to be like, um, in a room by myself, like quiet and just like be able to, you know, be able to think from to myself. Yeah, I mean, because we had a, a musician in yesterday, and she yeah. says that a lot of her notes uh, come like she. Sings them into her phone. Yeah, she jots down stuff. Is that are you a notepad and pen kind of guy? Uh, I have my notes on my phone. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so I do that all the time. If I get an idea, um, I'll write it down. Or if a melody pops in my head, I'll pull out my voice memos and I'll sing it in my phone. Yeah, like I do that probably almost every single day. I've like Whoa. five hundred voice memos. So uh, look, if uh, if it isn't too much to ask, if we were to look at your phone right now, what would we find on there? <laughs> Look, on my phone? Like, specific, like where specifically? Like in your notes right oh, now. Oh, in my notes? Do you have your phone? Uh, like, would, would you have to I be able to peek? I do have my phone. Oh, well, that's I know this could be dangerous. Who this knows? is <laughs> very dangerous. But I know. I live on the dangerous side. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. So it could be like a few lyrics. Okay, first thing that popped up in my notes okay. was vocal warm-ups. Okay. So we have this. Uh, that's your warm-up? Oh, so yeah. It sounds like <laughs> deep, man. So pretty much, <laughs> this warm-up's like, we just go, oh, yeah. And then we'll, like, transpose it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we'll just, like, do that and then keep going up, keep going up. And that's the warm-up. Yeah, it's better than any song I could ever write. So, uh, <laughs> ne next single, oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, Not I a song, but a vocal warm-up. Yeah. <laughs> I think Usher has already got a song called Oh Yeah. But I think uh, I've heard moving that. On. So what about like anything else on there that isn't, that um, you, that you feel so comfortable? Only if you're comfortable. So if we leave that. Yeah. Um, well, next we have album. So Whoa. these are like all the songs on the album. Don't, yeah. don't look too closely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to play us a little bit of it? <coughs> Look into the crowd. Can we get it's, like, it's a maybe. Uh, it's a so and so. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble. No, 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 no. I don't want to no, get no, in no, trouble. No, no, no. I, I would not <laughs> want to get you in trouble. But other than that, I have like you yeah. know song ideas, like this one, like says green. We have. I mean, just like I've like. Jeez. So <laughs> now the important question: Do you go through it? <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. No, I do. Every once in a like, honestly, the times that I go through it is when I'm on the plane. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need to go through these notes and like. Just like get rid of its own that like, yeah. aren't good ideas or just yeah. like random stuff. Like one said Taco Bell. I was like, why does this note say Taco Bell? Just because um, you love Taco Bell. I guess so. I must important. have been like, yeah, I guess it was really important. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is important. I mean, uh, you haven't had any Taco Bell here. It's not really the, the, no. the country for it. But I, I hear <laughs> no. you have. You have been eating sushi, which is also pretty strange. Yeah, um, pretty good though. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to talk to you about the, the the cliche Aussie stuff you've managed to accomplish, but you have <laughs> yeah. ticked off a few, uh, yes. haven't you? What the did first you want? day, yeah. First day I got here, I went to the zoo. Yeah, met cool. some kangaroos. Yeah, some koala bears. Of course. Um, then yeah. went to the opera house. Sure. Then went to the bar there. Yeah. Had a couple of drinks. Yeah, nice. What um, you have? What can you do? You, an Aussie beer or? I did have an Aussie beer. Not the first day, but um, like two days ago I did. What is it called? Two two e. Yeah. Two e. Two e. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Um, I mean, before you even, because this is your first time here, isn't it? First time. What what did you have in mind? What were you thinking? Dude? So what I was expecting were a bunch of spiders, <laughs> a bunch of things trying to come and kill me. Yeah. Um, but luckily, I haven't even seen one single spider. Yeah. Um, and nothing has tried to kill me yet. Yeah. 
You've got really good minders. They just keep that all away from you. Yeah. A snake has tried to attack you twice since walking in this room. And someone has just sweeped it under a rug. (laughs) Uh, I'm like, what was that? (laughs) In danger all the time. Um, time. I wanted to talk to you about the uh, performances you've been doing lately. You mentioned the VMAs. You did the the pre-show at the VMAs with a whole string section. Um, what does it feel like when you're performing uh, at something as incredible as the, the VMAs with such huge productions? Yes, that was like one of the scariest things. Like it was, it was very intimidating, but it was also like such a surreal moment. Like yeah. I was like, man, I'm here at the VMAs performing. Um, like it was with like a whole string section. I had like a whole bunch of dancers behind me. I was like, yeah. this is. I honestly couldn't even believe like this was for me. Like yeah. it was, it was honestly insane. Heard a rumor that you met Stevie uh, Wonder. Uh, um, so I saw Stevie Wonder. Oh, and okay. okay, so I got invited to The Voice. Um, it was like the season finale. Okay. And so I got invited, and it was like Ariana Grande and Stevie Wonder. They were like seeing doing like a duet together, <laughs> which was super cool. Yeah. But I was like, I was like, oh my god, that's Stevie Wonder. And I've loved Stevie Wonder since I was a kid. Like I, I love his music. Yeah. Um, so it was Ariana there, and you're like, oh hey Ariana, out of my way. <laughs> I'm like, Ari, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I love Ariana Grande. Yeah, I mean, because uh, you know, the, the the performances you've been doing lately are incredible. I was watching this uh, one with the the Green Bay Packers were up against the Broncos. Yeah, yeah, big a- NFL match in the states, uh-huh. and you sang the national American anthem. Yeah, which a- as a song, we you know people have seen that song before, so yeah. people are expecting a certain standard. Uh, oh yeah, totally. How was it performing in front of? that many 85,000 people yeah it was um it was pretty scary but it was on I've 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 been practicing for this moment since I was a kid <laughs> my grandpa was um in the air force wow so he was like if you ever sing the national anthem make sure you sing it right and I was like oh yeah so he's like you have to say like everyone's like perilous and he's like make sure you say perilous and yeah. it was just like yeah so I got the I got the whole rundown yeah. Made sure I had it. I was saying it right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you still get nervous? I mean, you, you perform so frequently. Like, when was the last time you, you got nervous? Um, so I still get, I always get like a little bit of nerves before I go on stage. It's just, it just happens. I mean, um, but once I get up there, like all nerves go away and it's like, I know, mm. I know what I'm doing. What's your, what's your nerve busting kind of method? What do you do to, to get in that zone? Do you? Chamomile tea, you meditate. Yeah. Uh, I like tea. I do always. I always have tea before I sing. Okay. Um. Listen to some Little Wayne and like. Listen <laughs> to some Little Wayne and pump pump myself up. I like yeah. to jump around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, pump myself up, but yeah. yeah. That's it. Um. All right. So we have some uh, fan questions okay. coming in. Uh. So, uh, someone an anonymous person asks, yeah. "How do you feel being compared to the likes of Justin Timberlake and Justin Bieber?" And this one's for Emma. Um, I mean, those are some amazing artists. That's, I mean, for me, I just take that as a huge compliment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, they've definitely, I mean, particularly JT, he's like the yeah, all, all singing, mean, all dancing, and uh, his development from, you know, boy band guy to probably the coolest dude in music. Yeah, seriously, he's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, which Aussie musicians do you love? And this one's from Ness Green. So, so I would have to say Tones and I, actually, we like wow. Tones and I. But I'm also like um, Guy Sebastian's Choir. I love that song. Yeah. Um, Absolute tune. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, winner of uh, Australian Idol, actually. The very oh, really? F- the very first one so many years ah, ago. Yeah, and he's, yeah uh, his voice is incredible. Oh, uh, like a, an angel. Yeah, seriously. Uh, what venue do you most want to play in the future? So, obviously Madison Square Garden, but yeah. um, Red Rocks in Denver. Oh, yeah. Denver, Colorado. Incredible. Yeah. I've been there like three or four times. I've never even seen a show there. Um, but like every time I go, I'm like, this is my dream place. Wow. And also my manager said if I have a headline, he'll give me a car. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. What? I'm still waiting on that. Yeah. But the question is what kind of car? Because, <laughs> you know, Mini Moke is yeah, right? really <laughs> the kind of car that you like want. Like gets me like a buggy or something. Yeah. <laughs> little V-dub. Yeah. Um, but I, on top of that question, uh, when you are performing in front of, let's say, 85,000 people yeah. uh, compared to playing for a room of 80 yeah. uh, people, uh, do, you, do you feel that difference? Because uh, someone once said that 
it doesn't matter if it's 80 or 80,000. Yeah. You really only just look at the front row. That's so true. Um, yeah. I mean, do, do you feel uh, similar thoughts to that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, I mean, I even get more nervous when there's like five or six people and they're like this close. Sometimes it could be like I could be more nervous than, wow. you know, performing for people who, like, honestly, I can't even see. So, um, yeah. Yeah, chamomile tea, little Wayne, and you're fine. Don't yeah, worry exactly. about this. Exactly. Um, you have a ring on your wedding finger. <laughs> Did you get married? Uh, if so, congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. But no, I didn't. I, I'm not married. I yeah. uh, probably won't get married for a while, yeah. honestly. <laughs> and looking at your timeline, you know, started first song, four. Uh, yeah, yeah. Album out, 18. Probably be married by 20, you know. Maybe 22. Maybe 20. Okay, well, yeah, let's yeah. push it back. 22. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's look at your know, ring work here before we, we oh, go on. Yeah. You, that yeah. You've got the... Um, Ah uh, gosh, that that's the Buffy ring. It's the heart and the hands. Uh, yes. Does anyone watch Buffy? It's the uh, yeah. So there's a, a oh Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, um, it's a it's a particular uh, where there's a heart and there's two hands and there's a crown on that heart. It's an Irish ring. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Actually. Okay, look, I I'm just saw it and I was like, that is the coolest ring I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here to um to, to teach you things. I'm here to talk to you. So no, but I appreciate it now. <laughs> but now I can say that when someone's like, "What does that ring mean?" Yeah. I'm like, "Well, it's actually an Irish." Uh, yeah, we're Irish gonna have ring. to we're gonna have to Google it afterwards. Cause I and feel actually, like, uh, um, this ring, one of my Australian friends got this for me. Oh no way! His name's Eddie Benjamin. Okay. Um, and where did he give it to you? And what was the reason? So, um, he honestly, I guess he was just being really nice. He was like, "Yo, I got you this ring." Uh, I got no, no. It was for my birthday. It was for my birthday, but it, like I didn't get it until like eight months later. Cause, so his grandpa was actually making the ring for me, um, cause grandpa's a jewel. Uh, uh, he makes jewelry, and um, so yeah, he got this for me. So now he, now I have to get him a gift back. Wow. <laughs> um. So look, uh, I, uh, the voices in my head have just reminded me uh, uh -huh. that uh, that ring is actually symbolic of friendship, uh, love, and loyalty, uh, and oh, heart. No. Uh, so there you go. Next oh, time you didn't uh, even tell me that someone asks you, you can you can tell them that uh, a few more questions coming in from your online fans uh, when was the first time you started posting vids to youtube uh you're performing covers uh what was your favorite song from when you did originally uh, start with your covers my favorite song so i actually started posting covers on instagram when i was 13 yep. um covers but also original music i was writing but i think my f the first first cover i put out was 105 by jason derulo cool and that, that was like my favorite song at the time yeah wow have you ever crossed paths with the people who you've done covers of? Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's the only one. Did you talk to him about it? Or yeah, yeah, no, me and, Sh me and Sean are pretty close. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, wow. Uh, what did he say about it? Was he like, oh, yeah, well. Well, I don't think he brought up the covers. <laughs> he, I don't think he ever brought up the covers, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just as long as he approves. Uh, yeah, no, he approves. Okay, some, some more people have uh, dropped some uh, questions your way. For an aspiring right. young musician uh, and for other artists out there, what advice would you give? Uh, and uh, can you share a little bit about that uh, amazing journey? Yeah, I would say the most important thing to do is to uh, go out and perform. Um, because for me, in the beginning, I never wanted to perform. Um, I only wanted to be a songwriter. I only wanted to write songs. I wanted to write songs for other people. Um, but I didn't want to be in the spotlight because I used to be super nervous. Like, I was so nervous, like, to the point where I didn't even want to go on stage at all. Um, Whoa. But, but luckily, once I started, like, um, once I got older, a little bit older, and, like, my mom was always there to help, like, push me, was like, no, you got this. Like, go ahead, go ahead and do it. Um, and the more I started performing, the more I started doing it, the less nervous I got, and the more I realized, like, okay, this is what I want to do, and I actually like performing. Do you think that that is why you found success from making so many videos online, was that almost like a, a way to test the waters before yeah. performing live? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. wow. And that's kind of what like helped me, you know, want to want to actually, you know, be in the spotlight and um, be the artist. Yeah. Can you remember that first gig when you performed live, and and you thought to yourself, "No, this is this is what I'm gonna do now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna be this guy." Yeah, it was actually like a it was like a bar right down the street, and they always had like open mic night. And I remember my mom was like, you want to do this? And I was like, no. <laughs> she was like, we're doing it. Grabbed our keyboard. We showed up. Um, and then I played like three of my songs. And I got a lot of great feedback. And it just like, it was the best feeling. And I was like, okay, I actually like this. Fantastic. Um, look, 
I'm going to say this. I think that you are wildly talented and I am really, really excited about seeing what you're going to be capable of in the future. Looking forward to this next record. And I just want to say thank you so much for yeah. dropping into the Build studio. Absolutely. A round of applause. Oh, man. Thank you for you having me. If you want to me. catch AJ Mitchell's next tunes, 2020, stick around. This is the Build Studios. Sweet. Sweet.